Hey friends, how y'all doing? Um, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Wrinkle over your nose. Mia used to be like one of my favorite artists. Now that he's not one now, he's just not necessarily the closest to the top. Um, oh, I want to say good evening to my parents um, and to my sister. Hope you guys are having a good day. All right, so we're all sure. When you're mad, think I don't take you seriously. All right, are you ready? So tonight we have, as usual, some really cool stories. Um, our NPL nugget is pretty interesting too. Super excited to talk to you about these stories today. Um, if you are an animal lover or if you donate to charities, we have a story for you. If you are a Starbucks fan, we have a story for you. If you're a Jay-Z fan, um, we have good news for you. If you're not a Jay-Z fan, this may not be good news for you. Uh, Mariah Carey is making, you know, an appearance on the show tonight. She's hilarious. Um, and also, if we get to these, uh, you need to be careful what you name your beers. And Ralph Lauren is going after a serial lawbreaker. All right. So that is all tonight on NPL Legal Dish. Uh... All right, we're getting started in three minutes. Um, where y'all at? Where y'all at? It's eight o'clock, right? Okay. Ooh, you know what? Let me go get some chapstick. Hold on. My lips are feeling a little dry. Don't judge me, y'all. All right. I'm here. want to be all up in your head sorry i'm listening to the chris brown station and they're playing usher and neo and all the people i love mm. what's when you guys are listening um oh hey trista taylor welcome back dear um yes so excited you made it back um i don't know if yesterday was your first time hanging out with us but i'm glad you returned yeah, so we are getting started in just two minutes. Um, make sure that you share this out to your friends at 8.05 um, as well. What else? Um, our NPL Nugget, we are continuing our series on trademarks. Um, what else? So we're going to have a good time today, okay? Okay. Um, one, we're getting started in one minute. Make sure you ready. Get ready. Wait, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Whatever you need. If you need, you know, a little drinky poo, get your favorite sweater, a snack, a piece of paper and a pen, your favorite hat. However you like to get comfortable for the show, get yourselves together so we can um, get started. Okay? So... I am, I'm super, uh, I'm super happy. It's like, these stories are really cool. And I see that more and more people are tuning in to the show, which means that you like what I'm saying and that makes me feel good. Okay. All right. So we're getting started soon, guys. Welcome to, oh, we're getting started now. Okay. All right. Hitting record. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If this is your first time seeing my face or you're listening to the replay of the podcast and you're like, who is this person in my ear or in my face? Uh, I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So things like making sure you have appropriate contracts for clients and partners, getting your articles of incorporation, making sure you have EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, basic brand protection strategies so people don't steal your business ideas, and hiring and training strategies so you don't get sued for discrimination. I help you do all of these things. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you, I'm really glad that you asked. I am a licensed attorney, have been one for 15 years and counting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I am very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful, um, there's just some things that you need to know. There's no way around it. Um, you just gotta, you just gotta know it. So that's why I'm here to help you, you know, get those things accomplished and understand those concepts. So if you're in the startup phase of your business, or you've got a business idea and you're like, I don't even know where to start, or you've been in business for a while, but you know, your paperwork ain't right. Um, I want you to get in contact with me. Go to Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. You can connect with me in many different ways there. You can book yourself a free 15 minute consultation if you are a first time client. You can download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will provide you a, ch a PDF checklist of all the tasks that you should be accomplishing um, on the path to making your business legitimate. Um, you can access many of my digital products like my video trainings and ebooks this month we are focusing on trademarks which is included with my trademark ebook is included in this month's offer the protect your biz uh ebook bundle you get my ebooks on trademarks patents and copyrights um at linktree forward slash npl consulting firm you can also subscribe to the youtube channel and the podcast so that if you ever miss a live broadcast you can catch up on your own um, you know, at your leisure. And last but not least, Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm is where you can get your show merch. You can get your cute little mugs, you know, these are so cute. Mmm, makes the water taste delicious. <laughs> you can also get your NPL legal dish teas. They come in black, white, and navy blue. So, you know, if you are a viewer of the show and you want to support and let everybody know at the same time how you got so smart about business, um, pick yourself up some merch, okay? But that is enough about me and, and the business side. Let's talk about the show because that's why y'all are here, right? So NPL Legal Dish, for those of you who might not know or if you're watching somewhere, you know, down the line in time and you're like, what is this that I have stumbled upon? Here is how the show works. I pull stories from the news, stories that you wonderful people send me, stories from blog sites, podcasts, anywhere I find inspirational stories that have lessons that we can learn as business owners. I bring them to the table and we talk about them and we um, pull out the lessons that we can learn, okay? So this is a time for you to get involved. Don't be shy. I want your questions. I want your comments as long as they are respectful, okay? So don't be shy. You know, there's room for everybody in the room. Um, yes, uh, but uh, as, we go, as we go to start the show, I want to do our NPL nugget. This is how we have been starting. Hey, Zephyrina, this is how we have been starting our show all 2021. Um, at the beginning or end of the show, whenever I remember, I teach a quick um, bite of a legal concept that I think it's important for you guys to know. Like I said earlier, we are focusing on trademarks this month, okay? My girl Zephyrina here, y'all. Um, we are focusing on trademarks this month. We've been talking about them since last week, maybe two weeks. When was May 1st? I don't... Uh, we've been talking about it for, for a while, okay? Um, and we, we've defined what a trademark is. We've defined what it protects. We talked about intellectual property. We've talked about, you know, what you can trademark, um, you know, and... 
but did you know today what I want you to know is that when you are planning to get something trademarked, there are five different levels of trademark strength that you can have. Okay. There are five levels. And of course you always want to, um, you know, have, um, have the strongest one, but you know, if you're ever just kind of stumped, I want you to keep these five levels of trademark strength in mind. So it helps you figure out what kind of trademark do I want for my business? Okay. So the first level of trademark strength, which is the strongest is what is called fanciful or coined, which is yes. Take notes, girl, get a pen and paper. Um, or, you know, you can always, if you, if you need to rewatch, you know, I always upload it and you can, and you can rewatch it and take the notes. But the first level of trademark strength is fanciful or coined, which means it is a word that you make up. Um, it's a word that you make up for your business. So if you think about the, um, the, the, the gas station chain Exxon, right? Exxon is not a real word. They made that name up. They, they, you know, um, and that is what's called fanciful and coined. So that is a very strong trademark. All right, because it, it's not a word that exists. We when we think Exxon, we immediately think gas, right? And there's nothing else in our at least English language that um uh you know approaches Exxon. So fanciful or coined is the um, strongest type of trademark. The next level down is arbitrary. It's when you choose a random word that has nothing to do with your business to represent your business. Think the most famous representative of this for me is Apple, Apple technologies. They don't have, they don't do anything having to do with the apples that we eat, right? They make computers, they make phones, they make all sorts of technology. Their business has nothing to do with apples, but they were like, we're just going to call our business Apple. And it's arbitrary, meaning the, the, the name has nothing to do with what you actually do. Um, so arbitrary is the next level of strength. So we've got fanciful and we've got arbitrary. The next level down is in strength is suggestive trademarks. It's kind of when it gives an idea of what your, uh, of what your, um, product or service does. So think about the, the water brand Aquafina, right? We have, we know it has something to do with water. So that is a suggestive trademark. Okay. Um, and, and then after that, we got fanciful, arbitrary, suggestive. The next level after the next level down after that is surnames. So yes, you can trademark your last name. Think about the Kardashians. Think about, um, you know, when they have, I don't know, Jones's shoe store or whatever. You can put your name in front of whatever it is you're selling and make that unique. So you can trademark your name as long as you do it, you know, in a, um, in a way that doesn't, that isn't common. Um, and the last, Hey boss, frosty and the last strength, um, the last level of strength for trademarks, which is the weakest. And the one that is probably going to get denied nine times out of 10 is a descriptive trademark. So things like fast, easy, um, you know, uh, lightning, anything that just describes your product. You don't want that, right? Hey, 76 Grimke. Um, so yeah, so those are the five levels of trademark strength, fanciful or coined, arbitrary, suggestive, surnames, and descriptive. If you um, want to get the full scoop on that, make sure you pick up the Protect Your Biz ebook bundle. It is $29.97, okay, um, when you go to linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. <clears throat> All right, so we've gotten through our NPL nugget. Let's get to these stories, y'all. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. First story that we are having tonight, animal lovers. If you are an animal lover, please give me some type of animal emoji. If you are an animal lover, please give me some type of animal emoji. Y'all know I love my Toby. So, um, you know, imagine I put a puppy in the, um, in, in the comment box. But if you are an animal lover, give me any type of animal emoji. All right. Um, and, you know, and we know that we, there's people in the world who are really dedicated to animals. They have, you know, charities to collect money to protect them. They have wildlife sanctuaries, 
all sorts of things, right? So animals, thank you, Boss Frosty. Animals are um, can be very special. Y'all know I love me some Toby. He is my baby. Thank you all for the animal emojis. Um, oh yeah, and I feel like if you don't like animals, there there's something wrong with you. Not to, okay. Actually, let me not say that because my mother doesn't like animals, but she's like a saint. Um, but you know, that's just how she was raised. They don't really do pets, <laughs> but, um, all right. Why are we talking about, um, animal lovers and pets? So here's, um, like I said, some people really love animals and you know, they donate to charities. Y'all remember that commercial with Sarah McLaughlin with the sad looking puppies. And she was like, in the arms of the angel. <laughs> Y'all remember that commercial? All right, and you know, and they got so many people to donate money because people love animals and they had Sarah McLaughlin singing that sad song, right? Um, well, <laughs> Zephyrine is laughing at me. Well, there is um, a, a, a charity, a, well, a, a, an animal sanctuary. They're called Wild Animal Sanctuary. They are located, <laughs> they are located in um, Colorado and Texas. Um, and you know, and they have, you know, these, these uh facilities where they help protect uh where they help protect um endangered species right and of course you know they're a nonprofit organization so they take donations and things like that they are so and the place is called wild animal sanctuary okay now wild animal sanctuary they are suing a company called or an or, or a, a nonprofit called Wildlife Sanctuary Fund. Uh, they are located in um, Montana and Arizona. Wild Animal Sanctuary says that Wildlife Sanctuary Fund has been infringing on their trademark since 2019. Um, uh, they, they've even done background research on the people who run the Wildlife Sanctuary Fund. Um, and they're saying that uh, while it's supposed to be a sanctuary, meaning a place where animals are kept, this nonprofit organization is being run from a residential um, from a residential home, meaning somebody's running it out of their home office. And when they did some background research on the person who is running this nonprofit, they found out that this person is running not one, but several nonprofit organizations having to do with a range of things, having to do with animals, with children, with the homeless, with whatever you can think of, right? Um, and, and running these quote unquote charities. But other than that, you can't find any public info for these charities. You can't find any, you know, who's working there, none of that. So, uh, more likely than not, these are probably sham nonprofit organizations that the people who are running them are using to solicit ill-gotten donations, right? To line their pockets. And they have been doing that using all of these organizational names, including Wild Animal Sanctuaries. So Wild Animal Sanctuary is going after Wildlife Sanctuary Fund. They want triple damages and they want an injunction from the court, meaning they want the court to tell the people running Wildlife Sanctuary Fund to stop using the name. Why? Because Wild Animal Sanctuary has testimonies from you know people who want to donate, who said they have donated to this organization, Wildlife Sanctuary Fund, thinking it was Wild Animal Sanctuary. This is why it is important for you to be very consistent with, um, Oh, Fat Samuel goes fit asked um, asked a question. Fat Samuel, we are talking about um, a trademark infringement case. Um, I don't know if you've watched this show before, but we learn business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. And I am in the middle of our first story. Okay, um, so yes, yeah, so Wild Animal Sanctuary, they are suing Wildlife Sanctuary Fund because they've basically been collecting money in their name. Um, you know, under under uh, 
false pretenses. You don't have a sanctuary. You're literally running this nonprofit organization from your living room and you're doing it using someone else's name. This is why you need to defend your name because you don't want people to, you don't want somebody out there doing bad things with your name and people think that it's you. Remember we had the, the story of that restaurant that Grubhub put on there without their permission and people kept getting, you know, bad, um, their orders were bad and it was reflecting on the restaurant. Why? Because Grubhub had no relationship with their, with that restaurant. So there was no communication. Wild Animal Sanctuary and Wildlife Sanctuary Fund, they are in no way connected to each other. And since Wild Animal Sanctuary has the trademark for their name, they are going after Wildlife Sanctuary Fund. So this is why it's important for you to be diligent about um, when you have your trademarks, to be diligent about checking who is using your name out there, right? Because you don't want people using your name to do bad things and then in turn giving your company a bad name. All right. All right. Moving forward to our next story. If you like Starbucks or if you like coffee, please give me a, uh, a coffee emoji. Excuse me. My nose was itchy. If you like Starbucks coffee or coffee in general, give me a coffee emoji, please. If you're a coffee lover. Like, so last year, 2020, my last cup of coffee was on March 18th. And then I didn't have another cup of coffee until like March of this year. Cause I, I only drank coffee when I went to work. Um, but yeah, coffee's not really my thing. 76 Grim K said she likes chai tea. Okay. You know, I'll come and I like tea too. I like fruity teas. Like there's this, um, brand of tea called Rishi tea and they have a blueberry, blueberry is it blueberry hibiscus or blueberry jasmine? Anyway, it's so good. Hi, the, the official diamond. Girl, this name gets longer and longer every time I see you. The official diamond sweat aquafina. Hey, girl. All right. Um, but move, moving on. <laughs> so we all know the iconic. Hi, Dr. H. Psy D. Oh, hey, Marsha. Um, so we all know the iconic Starbucks logo. Yes. Um, if you look at my stories, my Instagram stories, um, I posted a picture there and I asked you guys if it was too close for comfort. It was two logos. One said Starbucks coffee. The other said Bulu Pulu Tapioca. Um, if you have not had a chance to check out that picture in my Instagram or Facebook stories, please go check it out right now because I, I, I'm going to need your opinion in a moment. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys like 15 seconds. Just go check it out real quick. Okay. One, two, three three, four, five, bear with me, uh, podcast land, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So everybody saw it. If you saw the picture, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. If you saw the picture. All right. And while you do that, um, I'm going to let, I'm going to fill you in. So as you can see, there are some big similarities between the pictures that are in my Instagram story, right? And, uh, Bulu Pulu, they did submit an application to get their, uh, logo approved by the USPTO and the USPTO, they did an initial acceptance and then they posted it for opposition and Starbucks opposed the, um, op opposed the, the, the application. They were like, no girl, this is just a rip off of, of the Starbucks logo. That was, um, that that's basically what Starbucks was saying. Okay. Um, Zephyrin, okay. Uh, Zephyrin said, I could see the similarity, but I feel the actual detail is different. Put a pin in that because that's going to come into play later. Okay. So of course, Starbucks opposes the, uh, the, the logo. They're like, girl, what are you doing? We're, we're the green circle out here in, in these streets. Right. Um, here's the thing. I've told you guys so many times you didn't, you don't see the similarity. Um, I've told you guys so many times when you trademark something, you only trademark it in your industry or class of goods. When you are filing a trademark application, you have to tell them what area are you trademarking in? So McDonald's, their logos are trademarked for fast food restaurants. Um, 
Apple, their logo is for technology, technology, whatever. Um, Tiffany blue, that blue is only used in, in, in the jewelry, in the jewelry, uh, industry. Only Tiffany's can use that shade of blue. Okay. So Starbucks, um, trademarks, they have uh, trademarks for that logo in classes 18, 25 and 30. Class 30 includes caffeinated beverages, teas, all the things that Starbucks does. Yes. Bulu Pulu is seeking to trademark or was seeking to trademark their logo in classes 29, 30, and 43. Now, you heard Starbucks and Bulu Pulu, they both um, filed for trademarks within class 30, right? But Bulu Pulu, they kind of, you know, change their things up a little and they're like yes we're doing caffeinated drinks as well but all of our caffeinated drinks have have tapioca in them um so that so that was their thing they're like everything we do has tapioca our name is bulu pulu tapioca so what do you think the court decided when starbucks said we don't want bulu pulu to be able to get this logo what do you think the um the court said who did they agree with? Did they agree with Starbucks or did they agree with Bulu Pulu? If you think they agreed with Starbucks, give me an S. If you think they agreed with Bulu Pulu, give me a B. Give me a B. Mm. Um, yeah. So if you think the court agreed with Starbucks, give me an S. If you think the court agreed with Bulu Pulu, give me a B. 76 Grimke said Starbucks. Anybody have a differing opinion? I want to get the votes in. I got two people watching me on Facebook and y'all don't want to participate in a conversation. I don't know if y'all are driving or something, but let me know. Um, okay. So everybody said Starbucks and everybody's wrong. <laughs> I was surprised too. Thank you, Cheryl. I was surprised too. Um, the court said, look, we understand that there, you know, there's some similarities. Yeah. But you guys are trademarking in different industries. And on top of that, the one that's overlapping, they have created a very visible distinction. While yes, the color scheme is similar, the design is totally different. And the court agreed in favor of Bulu Pulu. This is why it's important to, um, you know, really be distinctive in your trademark applications and know what class of goods you want to trademark in. Uh, Zephyrina said Facebook is so slow. It's all right. Okay. So Starbucks won versus Bulu Pulu. If you think the court made the right decision, give me a yes. If you think the court made the wrong decision, give me a no. If you think the court was right to agree with Bulu Pulu, give me a yes. If you think the court should have agreed with Starbucks, give me a no. Let me know what y'all think about that. Because, you know, I understand where Starbucks was coming from, but Bulu Pulu, they were slick. They were like, look, you know, we're just going to maneuver around these little rules around here. Okay. What y'all think? What y'all think? Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Zephyrina thinks that the court got it right. Okay. Uh, 76 Grim K said, yes, Starbucks has enough of my money. <laughs> okay. Um, Boss Frosty, what do you think about that? What you think, boo? Cheryl, what do you think? Do you think the court got it right or do you think they got it wrong? <clears throat> All right. Put, um... Boss Frosty said, no, they could have come up with a better logo. So Boss Frosty is not here for the court's decision. You would have wrote a dissenting opinion. Um, okay. Well, I mean, Starbucks could appeal, I guess. But uh, for, for now, Bulu Pulu Tapioca is good to go. All right. Um, Cheryl said, I think the court was right. I thought maybe because Starbucks was a bigger company, they would side with Starbucks. And that is the beauty of trademarks and intellectual property. It doesn't matter how small or how big you are. If you have your intellectual property ducks in a row, you can come up against anybody, right? We talked about some case 
last year, or maybe the year before, where this small hair company went up against L'Oreal um, because L'Oreal stole their idea and they won like some, it was either 10 million or a hundred million dollars from L'Oreal, from this little company, okay? So intellectual property does not care how big or how small you are. It cares that you have your paperwork in order, all right? Okay, moving forward, um, before we move on to our next stories, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business and you need some legal advice from a friend who knows what they're talking about, go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Link up with me today. Go book your free 15 minute consultation if you're a first time client and also make sure you download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. If you know who Jay-Z is, give me a, give me a diamond. Give me the diamond, um, the diamond emoji. Diamonds are forever. Um, if you are a Jay-Z fan or you know who Jay-Z is. Okay. Um, also known as Beyonce's husband. That's what I call him. If you know who Beyonce's husband is. <laughs> Give me a diamond emoji. <laughs> Beyonce bringing her husband out again. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Zephyrina, for the diamonds. Thank you, 76 Grim K, for the diamonds. All right. Um... Okay. Uh, we all know... Thank you, Boss Frosty, for the diamonds. We all know... Jay-Z is out here in these business streets. The man is a billionaire. He's making deals every day. He just sold title for how many millions, like over $300 million to the CEO of Square. Um, Jay-Z gets to the money and he has, you know, his hands in a lot of different pots. Thank you, Cheryl, for the diamond. Um, and apparently Jay-Z is formally and, you know, throwing his hat into the uh, telev or television or, you know, video entertainment arena. Jay we know that Jay-Z has executive produced documentaries like the Khalif Browder stories and a couple of other things, but Jay-Z has officially filed a trademark application um, for the, the um, it's, it's two forward slash J that's, that's the, uh, I guess the name two J, um, for the name of an entertainment company dealing with TV, TV and broadcasting. So apparently Jay Z is getting into, um, you know, the TV or, or the movie arena, whatever it is, he's going to be, have something to do with uh, the visual entertainment industry. How many of you guys would be interested in a Jay-Z television network or, you know, I don't know, a Jay-Z streaming service, who knows what he might do. He could do it all. But if Jay-Z, you know, started his own like movie production company, would you guys be interested in the work that comes out of there? What do you guys think about that? Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, ooh. What do y'all think about Jay-Z's trademarking this name for a potential, you know, um, video entertainment company? Boss Frosty is here for it. She gave me one, two, three, four, five, six arms up. Okay. Anybody here ready for it? I will watch it. Um, I would definitely watch it, especially if, you know, Beyonce going to be on there. <laughs> Zephyrina said maybe. Okay. Zephyrina said maybe. That's cool. Anybody else? Cheryl, would you watch a, a Jay-Z TV? If Jay-Z had his version of OWN, would you watch? 76 Grimka said, okay. Cheryl said, yes. Okay. So I think a lot of us would watch, but we will, we'll just wait and see what comes out with it. I'm sure he's, he's going to come out with something else that's going to make him a lot of money. Good luck to him. Um, all right. Next story we are talking about. Okay, friends. Who can tell me who is the elusive Chanteuse? You're not a TV person. Okay. Um, who can, who can tell me who, what, um, R and B diva icon, you know, queen of music, queen of Christmas. Who is the elusive Chanteuse? Or I should say chanteuse. That's actually how you pronounce it. It's not the elusive chanteuse. It's the elusive chanteuse. 
Who is the elusive chanteuse or chanteuse? <laughs> Y'all should know this. And if you don't know this, I'm going to be very upset. Y'all don't know who the elusive chanteuse is? Okay. Um, how many of y'all listen to the album, The Emancipation of Mimi? If you listen, if you know the album, Emancipation of Mimi, give me an M in the comments. Oh my God, Zephyrina. You know, this might affect our friendship, girl. Yes, 76 Grimke. Mariah Carey. Yes, Mariah Carey. <laughs> Queen of Christmas. That was a big, that was a big clue. Um, so... We all know Mariah, she, look, you cannot, you cannot even like question Mariah's catalog. The lady has written everything. She is queen of Christmas. She has all the money and she does what she wants, right? Um, but uh, Mariah Carey recently was tagged in something. Hi, my silent dance party online. Um, how many of y'all remember when OT Genesis remade Keisha Cole's Love and uh was star and he and he remade it into some type of like crip uh crip parody? If you remember that, just give me a hands up, right? Well, there is a up-and-coming rapper who goes by the 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 name YTK and <laughs> the Instagram autocorrects too much. Um and he uh he took Mariah Carey's 2005 hit, Shake It Off. Um, I'm going to shake it off. Because loving it the same. Keep on playing games. Anyway, let me not get no copyright strikes against me. But YTK took Mariah Carey's song, um, Thank You Boss Frosty, called Shake It Off. Uh, called, um, oh, my God. Why did my Instagram just go out? Oh my God. Hey y'all, come back, come back, come back. Um, look, <laughs> I think Mariah Carey got my, my broadcast shut down, y'all. <laughs> my Instagram just shut down. Um, okay. But uh, Mar Mariah Carey uh, was tagged in this song that uh YTK did. He took Mariah Carey's song. Hey 76 Grimke, look, I think I think Mariah Carey got me shut down, girl. She did not want me talking about, you know, the elusive, I don't know, or or Instagram or something. They were like, look, what you're not gonna do is talk about Mariah. But I wasn't saying nothing bad, girl. Um yes. Uh but uh Mariah Carey um was tagged in this video that Y2, YTK did, hey, hun, um, for, and he took her song, Shake It Off, and he remade it and called it Let It Off. And it was a, sh a song about, you know, shoot shooting his enemies. <laughs> Zephyrina, I think Mariah Carey got the broadcast shut down. <laughs> um, but yes. So YTK makes this song called Let It Off. It was, you know, it was obviously he took Shake It Off and, and redid the words. It was the same cadence. And, you know, he remade it to talk about shooting his en enemies. OK. Um, and somebody tagged Mariah in the video and they said Mariah Carey has 24 hours to respond. Now, YTK did not get any clearance to remake this Mariah song, right? So there was no clearances, whatever. I mean, granted, he wasn't trying to sell it, whatever, but there's no clearances, right? He didn't ask Mariah's people for permission, nothing. So Mariah, being the funny, petty queen that she is, she responded to that tweet and said, how about y'all have 24 hours to respond to my lawyers, okay? <laughs> um, now, we all know Mariah, she likes to joke, she likes to kid online, that's who she is. She's not, you know, she's not really going after these people. Mariah has all the money. Hey, Cannon Cape Con. Mariah has all the money in the world. She's not going after this man's little money. He don't have no money. He's not even going to make no money off of this song. But it was very funny that Mariah Carey was, um, you know, she would, she would, she would have the right to go after him if she wanted because he doesn't have copyright clearance. He did not get a license. But because Mariah is who she is and she knows how to take a joke, she's not going after him. But she will 
burn you. And that is why she said, how about y'all have 24 hours to respond to my lawyers? Um, so that was just some trademark humor or copyright humor, I should say, that I wanted to bring your way this evening. And that Mariah Carey, it, she she is here. She is here for the games, okay? She will play with you. All right? Okay. So I think we have time. Um, no, actually. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, we have time for this last one. All right. And the last story that we are talking about this evening Remember at the beginning of the show, we went over the five different levels of <laughs> so Mrs. Grimke said, and she showed herself tonight. She did, girl. Uh, remember at the beginning of the show, our NPL nugget, we went over the five different strength levels of trademarks, right? We said there's fanciful, there um, that's the strongest, then it's arbitrary, suggestive, um, surnames, and descriptive, right? So, uh, recently a beer company tried to, you know, trademark a name for their beer and the, uh, USPTO said, no, this company called Dank Tank, they are a, a beer brewing company and they wanted to call their beer Dank Tank and it's for funky flavored ales, right? Um, and the USPTO said no. Why do you think the USPTO denied the application for Dank Tank for a line of funky flavored ales? Why do you think the USPTO did not want to approve a trademark for um, Dank Tank, which is the name of a line of funky flavored ales? <laughs> 76 Grimke said that name is horrible. Okay, besides the name being horrible, why do you think the USPTO said no? Yes, Canna Cape Cod, you are on the money. The USPTO said the word dank is associated with cannabis products. So people who saw dank tank on the shelves, they might think this product contains cannabis and that is misleading the public and you cannot mislead the public when uh, when you have your products it's just like that company we talked about the other day that was making that line of environmentally friendly shoes and they wanted to call it clear and the USPTO said no because people might think that all you sell is clear shoes um I thought that was dumb but anyway the USPTO said here look People, when they think of dank, they think marijuana, they think cannabis. And we don't want people thinking that there are cannabis, you know, beers running around, <laughs> running around on shelves. Can of Cape Cod said, look at them protecting cannabis. Um, 76 Grim K said, I didn't know the relationship. I still say reefer. <laughs> Girl, you showing your age, okay? <laughs> but it's okay, you look good. Um, but yeah, so the USPTO said, no girl, dank is associated with something that is not federally legal at the time. And we are not going to let the public think that we have cannabis infused beers running around in United States of America. So they denied it. Okay. Um, do you guys think that was a good decision or a bad decision? If you think it was a good decision, give me a thumbs up. If you think it was a bad decision, give me a thumbs down. And while you do that, I'm going to, you know, roll out. The end of the show, if you have any questions about what we covered today, we have about, you have two minutes to get it in and I will cover it. But um, thank you all for uh, for hanging out with me tonight. Thank you all for putting up with, uh, you know, the, the, um, the, the technical difficulties. I got a lot of thumbs up here. Great decision, good. Um, you know, sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't, but you can always watch the replay on YouTube. I'm gonna upload it right after here. Um, but yeah, we'll be back here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with more stories. Uh, if, if you missed any part of the show, please be sure to watch the replay. Uh, if you have more questions about trademarks, make sure you pick up the Protect Your Biz ebook bundle because it's going to answer a lot of your questions. Um, if you find anything that you want me to talk about, I think at least... Uh, 76 Grim K, you sent me uh, two stories. I didn't get to the last one, but we'll get to it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I will be here tomorrow. I hope you guys are here too. Have a good night. Take care of yourselves. Bye.